Hi, and hello to the people in chat. This is very cool. This is like dual purpose presentation and very, very hyped for this. Um, and I am also, good segue, very hyped to talk about uh, Among Us' this TikTok strategy with you, which I have seen some people go like, TikTok is my nemesis. And I understand, and I understand there's a lot of social media platforms out there. Uh, so this is going to be a deep dive into one of them to hopefully kind of help you navigate everything. So as a brief introduction, uh, my name is Victoria Tran. I'm the community, community director at Inner Sloth. Uh, we make the game Among Us and the Henry Stickman collection. And at any point and afterwards, you can find me on Twitter at the VTran, um, usually around there, as many of us really are. Uh, and before I kind of get into like the in-depth portion of Among Us' this TikTok, I do have a confession uh, that at this point, I'm like a serial instigator, creator, content maker for indie game studio TikToks. Uh, Among Us is not the only one that I've worked on. And I think that actually gives me a lot of really nice context and contextual context and info uh, when it comes to uh, other kind of game studios and other genres. Uh, so as a really brief overview of what I've done, uh, I initially started the Kitbox Games TikTok account uh, in February 2020, uh, and they did amazing. I did not get them to 25K followers like you see here. I think I got them to like 10K. Uh, and they've done an amazing job with it. And they obviously had a bunch of different games and also it was interesting in that it was a studio account and not just a singular game. Uh, and then in July, 2021, I worked on the Unpacking a TikTok account, which by the way, they're doing amazing. They're like up for awards, I'm very proud of them. Uh, and that did super well that I think got to 170K until I left in December, 2021, uh, because that was just a side thing that I was helping them out with. And then finally, we reached the like Among Us TikTok account, which is my main thing. And I started that in December 2020. Um, so yeah, so I've worked on a bunch of different genres, a bunch of different games, uh, different kind of contexts when it comes to game studios. Uh, and as much as Among Us is a very huge <laughs> TikTok account, I think there's a lot of lessons that I learned throughout all three of them uh, that can be applied to whichever kind of TikTok account you have. Okay, so... Let's kind of get started, a little brief intro, all that kind of stuff. Um, so this is a study that was done by TikTok, conducted by Material. So just uh, a heads up that, you know, there might be some bias there. Uh, but according to the study that they did, TikTokers are 1.5 times more likely to immediately go out and buy something or wishlist something uh, they discovered on the platform compared to kind of other platform users. And this is sort of the big thing of why everyone keeps talking about TikTok. Uh, it's just that the discoverability for it in terms of other social media platforms is quite uh, good in terms of their algorithm. Um, people continually learning something new so learning more updates about your game learning more about your game that's a huge part of it and of course uh just being inspired and there's a lot of really great indie games out there and you know triple a games out there that it's really interesting to see the ways in which they inspire other tiktok users and really make it uh into the cultural zeitgeist i suppose so really briefly, again, I'm going to go back into Among Us, uh, get a little more in depth about it. Uh, so we launched, as, as I said, in December 2020. Uh, we got a ton of followers within the first six months, uh, which is very uh, not actually not that rare in terms of TikTok. OK. That's a lot. It's a little bit, it's rare in terms of TikTok growth to have that many, um, but you will often see like when a lot of indie games or a lot of other studios kind of talk about that the amount of follows that you get on an account does kind of exceed the rate in which you would see on like Twitter or Facebook, if you're using that or Instagram, that sort of thing. Um, and for context, I am the person who's currently working on all the community and marketing side stuff in Among Us, which means that I don't get as much time as I would like on it uh, because I have so many other things to do. Uh, and the goal for our Among Us account, which might be different for your accounts, uh, was brand awareness, engagement, and sustainability. So sustainability of our community, because at this point, uh, we had really good discoverability. So that wasn't one of the goals for the Among Us account. 
And of course, huge caveat, Among Us already had a huge player base. By the time I launched a TikTok, I don't really take credit for all the growth there. Um, and in terms of effort that I put into it, so for the Among Us account, I put in about one video per week at minimum. Um, I would love to do more, but as I said, it's a little bit difficult because I have so many other things to do. Uh, so at my frequency, I go once per week and I did that for the same thing for uh, unpacking, uh, where I did one video a week and Kit Fox was around two videos of a week if I could swing it. But again, it was, there's a lot, there's a lot of things going on. So I often couldn't do as many as I wanted. I honestly consider the effort that you have to put into TikTok quite high. So unlike um, like a tweet where you can just type it out or something, uh, creation for me takes around 15 minutes to one hour per video, depending on how uh, magnificent you want it and how much editing you're doing. Uh, the trends can take one to two hours per week in order just to like scroll through it and read and watch uh, all the things that are going on. And also I put in like an hour per week on engagement. So that could be like going through other videos and liking them and commenting on them, going through our own comments and commenting through them. Um, basically, personality and cultural understanding of TikTok has to be quite on point um, and engaging with it. So it is, it is quite a high effort uh, social media platform. So I just wanted to warn you about that. All right. So I will soon get to the case studies, but I really want to go over building a brand identifier on TikTok. Um, this kind of goes through uh, a very social media general strategy, um, but there are some unique considerations I put into TikTok structure. So the first thing is like, you really want to talk, uh, think about how you want to be recognized on TikTok because that's a huge thing. It's so visual, right? So the first thing is style and tone. So how you want to sound on TikTok. Do you want to be quirky, wholesome, relatable, calming, competitive? I usually pick three big adjectives that will describe your overall content. And then everything kind of trickles down from there. So what lighting will you use? How polished will things look? What kind of content will you create? How do you want your uh, audience to understand you? Then you go for consistent brand elements. So it's really beneficial for a TikTok account to have like one person or character continually and distinctly appear in videos. So scrolling through videos is really quick and not everyone checks the username and profile pic. So having a distinct face someone can immediately associate with your TikTok account really helps people identify your content easily. Um, and it's very common for people to have like only one to two people like actually appear in a TikTok when it comes to like their own account. Um, if you don't want to use your face, totally fine. Just use consistent elements. You can have certain lighting, a distinctive mark, an object, a color palette, a video game character. Um, Unpacking, for example, didn't have any characters whatsoever. So we really went with like uh, really distinct elements of it. Um, hook, uh, the first one to three seconds of a video is extremely important as with, you know, anything. I'm sure you've heard like the word hook so many times now, um, but you do really want to front load your video with the most interesting thing possible. And it doesn't even need to be visual. It could be a question like, um, how did I make feet move in my game or, uh, times I use the Among Us account for my own personal gain and everyone hates this task or something like that. Basically pose an idea and use the rest of the video uh, to expand on it. And then you have trends and this is a beautiful way to keep engagement, right? TikTok is known for its viral trends and hopping onto that in a timely manner uh, is really nice because if you can't think of anything or if you want people to stick around for something, uh, they'll tend to do it if there is like a trend that they know like a hook or some punchline is coming. And a lot of people think like, does creating a brand voice really matter, especially like if I'm indie? And it does, I think. <laughs> and according to the Sprout Social Index, um, some of the reasons why brands stood out more than others, according to consumers, uh, was like things like memorable, memorable content, um, personality, a distinct personality, and compelling story, compelling storytelling. And a lot of times with social, we're not gunning for like a one-hit viral thing. We're really aiming for a sustainable, practical, practical community engagement. And we can create content that is memorable and keeps us at top of mind. All right. So I'm going to go a little bit more in depth into the actual Among Us videos that we've done. So there are kind of five content types that I found really helpful for me when it comes to Among Us. Um, those are things are game updates. So these are ongoing updates about the game, whether it's bug fixes or huge announcements, um, personality TikTok. So videos hopping on trends or having fun with the community, uh, behind the scenes things that shows off more developer focused looks at the games and what goes into making it. Um, gameplay. So videos that focus on game content that is already out and miscellaneous things. So this could be reactions. Um, we have merchandise, so I use merchandise, that sort of thing. 
And game updates by far get the highest engagement and share rate for Among Us. This isn't really a shock. Uh, the difficulty here is really to make a game update interesting sometimes, especially when you know you don't have much to show for it or you need it to keep people informed about things like bug fixes, which is a little bit difficult. Um, but I do try to keep these as short as possible. Generally, people always recommend to keep these as short as possible, like any TikTok as short as possible, just because the looping is really good for the algorithm. Um, but it all varies. Anyways, so when it comes to the actual game updates, some things that I've done that have worked really well is really um, focusing the TikTok, right? So we've had like Among Us updates where it's like, hey, these are all the things that are happening. And instead, I just broke it apart into bit by bit pieces. So for example, we had an update on June 30th that introduced a bunch of new things, but the one standout thing was we had a new task that was vent cleaning. I mean, part of, you know, really understanding your community and knowing what makes them tick and really what like makes them laugh or makes them excited uh, is to know what they talk about. So a lot of people talked about vent cleaning being a kind of joke task in Among Us or a joke excuse, uh, and we actually implemented it. And so when I put it into the TikTok, that was the only thing that I focused on. And I didn't talk about any of the other things that we had. And I was just was like, hey, we have vent cleaning. And that made it more interesting than just like a casual bug update, a casual update full of fixes and stuff like that. There was also another time uh, where we updated the game and I'm sure many of you have been through this before and it just broke the game. Like <laughs> it wasn't working. Um, and the hard thing on TikTok is to really communicate, especially when you have a big community on it, is to just communicate, hey, we're working on bug fixes because you can't just tweet out, hey, we're, you can't just tweet out on TikTok, hey, we're working on bug fixes and do like a quick status update. So for this, um, I kind of hopped onto a trending meme at the time, uh, which was like a song, which you can't hear and the gesture. Uh, and I really made fun of the fact that we completely broke the game, which people took really well. And we got a lot of software developers relating to the video too. And it really successfully uh, conveyed information about keeping the game updated and that we were aware of the problems that people had with a meme. So that's cool. Um, so these TikToks that I'm going to talk about next are the personality-based TikToks. These are super varied in terms of vir virality, um, but that's okay though. The point of these TikToks aren't necessarily to get big numbers, though it's always nice, uh, but to solidify our tone with the community and create that connection as an indie studio. And these videos can often be longer. All right, so the one that I'm kind of focusing on here is that at the time of posting TikToks, the only question I was getting in comments was stuff about uh, where the new map was. And you can get this too. You can be like, oh God, like everyone keeps asking me when the release date is. Everyone keeps asking me if it's coming out on mobile, that sort of thing. Um, and hopping onto a trend and really like not being afraid to be honest with your TikTok community is one of the things that they just like love the most, um, even more so than like a lot of other uh, social media platforms I found that they've just really latched on to this kind of self-awareness. Next, we have behind the scenes videos. These honestly, for me, are the worst performing ones. And I think it's because I'm not very good at them. I've seen other indie studios do like so good uh, with them. And I... I don't know. It could be because I'm making it wrong. It could also be because the majority of our community really cares about new items and not really old ones, but that's okay. The videos here tend to be longer and aren't necessarily a target for the For You page for me anyway. They're usually more just to get our community engaged. So for example, um, you can answer questions from TikToks, like in the TikTok comments and respond to them. And that could be a way that you talk about more behind the scenes stuff. Um, here, it probably would have been a better hook if maybe I'd like shown a little more of the actual Among Us character, but that's all right. It's one of those things where you can kind of learn from your from videos that don't do as well. It's and also just like, you know, reading the comments and being able to respond to them. Next are the gameplay videos. These focus on gameplay. <laughs> it takes up a content. It takes content straight from the game and plops it into a fun little video. Um, and these tend to do relatively well, but they definitely vary due to the fact gameplay can cover anything from like difficult tasks, gameplay styles, looking at game details, that sort of thing. Um, and again, it's really important, I think, to really hone in on one part of 
a uh, the gameplay aspect. So for example, we had an update for Among Us roles and the actual trailer that I put onto the TikTok, uh, that I put onto the TikTok account didn't do super well. But this video that I just talked about focusing on the shapeshifter kill and showing it in the game did way better in terms of views. Uh, so that's a really interesting thing. Miscellaneous stuff, merchandise, reacts, interactions. Among Us has plenty of other things to talk about, and you may too. So whether it's duetting videos or showing off new merchandise, merchandise, I find it you know just really fun to be able to talk about it. Um, one of the things that I will say is that it does much better than I thought, but you have to be very careful about not straight up being like buy this thing because I feel like the algorithm or like TikTok on the back end doesn't really like the whole like buy, buy, buy um, thing. So instead, what I usually do is just literally show off like the product. Don't even say honestly, like where they can get it. You can put a website maybe in the comments or something or like respond to people. But otherwise, people just really like looking at cool stuff and merch for sure is one of those things that is big on TikTok. All this to say is that like I've shown you videos that have a lot of views, but it is a it is still a learning process. You can see like on the top left, uh, I have a video that had like 100K views and that's not as much as the one right below it, which is 12.9 million views. It really is one of those things where like I, no, don't, I wouldn't trust anyone who just guarantees that you can go viral all the time. It is definitely just working and figuring out what content works with your community and continually kind of testing it. Um, and that's really important, I think, when it comes to TikTok, but also when it comes to any social media platform is really testing and keeping track of what works and what doesn't work. Um, and how do we actually measure success? So this is a very rough overview. This is just like a snippet I took out of like a spreadsheet. Um, but this is the kinds of ways that I track, like how well is something actually doing? Um, what is our engagement percentage? Because that's something that's really important to me. And from this, we can determine things like personalized TikToks get the highest engagement compared to other categories, particularly in the number of people commenting. Um, however, game update TikToks usually get the most visibility overall. So it's like, what am I aiming for? Am I aiming for visibility? Am I aiming for engagement? Um, the most shareable content was the water bottle video, which makes sense because people probably wanted other people to see the merch and to buy it. Um, that really happens quite a bit. Um, and the second most shareable content was usually anything involving game updates because people would tell their friends like, hey, uh, let's play this or, you know, they share it with their communities. Behind the scenes videos are things that I probably shouldn't post a lot of or I should really change what I do because it is not doing as well as the other categories. Um, and gameplay is more like solid middle of the road content. And the For You page is obviously the best place to be in for visibility. But once people are on your profile page, having content that interests them will really help boost stats. It's really all about thinking like, you know, what are your goals for TikTok? Is it just views that hopefully convert to wish lists? Uh, do you want engagement on the platform? Are you aiming for shares? Overall, pay attention to what's happening with your content so you can better prepare for success on the platform. All right, so this is another chart. Uh, shout out to System, shout out to System Chalk on Twitter for this, who is an amazing economist and really helped me out with this. Um, we plotted this Among Us data on a graph that measures engagement and found that overall engagement percentage doesn't actually really shift based on the video length. So if you consider success to be people watching to the end of something, then shorter videos are better. Uh, but we didn't really see anything that indicated longer videos were hurting engagement measures. We also did a plot for length and views. And while it does show a negative trend, it's not a very strong relationship. I'm not saying completely irrelevant because the three longest videos are also the bottom three for views. And and the TikTok algorithm does reward videos that get rewatched over and over. Um, but it's fair to say that at least part of the connection is that we just have more success in the short video club. None of this really counts as a breakthrough, by the way, or anything really, especially considering, you know, how small our sample size is with the Among Us account. Um, but as in like the number of videos we have. Um, but we were just curious about the length and was a little surprised to see how stable the engagement measure was, no matter how long the video was. Um, and this is what it looks like for Among Us, but it's possible this graph might look different for other game audiences. As with any content, things really vary from game to game. 
And all of this is to say people getting excited and informed about your game is never a straight line. Um, it's really this infinite loop that, again, TikTok uh, put out. Uh, it's about discoverability, consideration, review and participation with your videos. And according to the study, 44 percent of the daily TikTok users did want branded content to be fun and entertaining. So, again, it's just it's this loop of figuring out what people want, what people are responding to. Um, and I wouldn't be discouraged if it, it doesn't work out all at once in the beginning. And I'm going to really briefly go over the community and being part of it because some initial warnings, if you haven't been on TikTok before, expect to see two comments the most. Will this game be on mobile and is it free? Don't forget TikTok is a mobile only app basically. So obviously the users will be prioritizing their phone, but also many are used to free mobile games being the norm. This isn't just to discourage you to say TikTok users won't buy or wish list your, wish list your game on PC or console. Definitely the opposite. It's just that I want to warn you and like any platform, there are biases and types of comments you may see. And you know, just, just be aware, don't, don't take it too, too much to heart. People do care about your game, even if they ask if it's free. <laughs> and it isn't always easy, right? So to be perfectly clear, initial viral TikTok, TikToks that I got on the Among Us account were just inundated with dead game comments. Any like big game you can see, they just get so many dead game comments. That isn't to say you have to give up the, on the platform though, when you do get negativity, at least engaging with, with it really helps people, people pay attention to who is reading and who is engaging to the com with the comments. Um, and again, why? It's because it's not just about going viral. It really is about building a sustainable long-term community for your studio. And if you hate going on a social media platform or your studio hates going on a social media platform because the comments are really bad, that's not a great place to be in. So really leaning into it can, if you have like the mental capacity, change the sentiment, create fans and highlight those that are ready in your corner and create a healthier space for your team. And, you know, really analyzing the negativity. Is it bugs? Is it lack of updates, a viral thing, et cetera? It's something that I really went into where like after like a period of honestly me being like, I hate it here, um, I started responding to more comments uh, because I know I know how lovely TikTok can be. So I started responding to things and like actually as Among Us, just not punching down on people, but trying to be like, hey, I appreciate you're here or hey, I'm just reading these comments, even if it's a joke, right? Um, and it actually started working, right? So we can see here, uh, people started being a little bit nicer about things. Uh, and then on the left, again, another example of me just kind of responding to a very uh, negative comment. And the thing about TikTok comments is it doesn't like really, or I don't know how they order it, but some things will just like pop up at the top, even if you respond, even if you don't respond to them, even if you do respond to them, just because it's getting a lot of engagement. So often at the times at the top, we'd see like dead game comments. So I just make sure I respond to those because you can see my reply below. And then on the right, you can see kind of the sentiment start to change where people were like, hey, why are you actually, why are you saying this? That's kind of mean. Um, and again, it's one of those things where um, being an indie game studio does really help with this and just being a person that is responding to it and people understanding there is a person behind the account has really helped. All of this to say is basically to make an effort to be a part of the community that you post in. Understand and pay attention to how the community and interacts in the space, the language they use, even emojis. All right. So we're almost near the end and then I can take questions because I know there are a bunch of questions in chat and maybe there are a bunch of questions in the audience. I'm not sure, um, but advice is important. Why have I kept talking about TikTok, about social media, that sort of thing, especially when you maybe have heard it's not super great for uh, in terms of like conversion in terms of all social media platforms. So this is a study by Hootsuite's Digital 2022 report. And the interesting thing about this graph is that I measured the percentage of internet users who use each channel as a primary source of information when researching brands. Though keep in mind, this is not game specific or anything. So there's some you know, messiness here. And we can see on the lower part of this graph from 35 to 64 year olds is as we expect. Find a brand on Google, any search engine for more information about the brand, its offerings and what it's like. The interesting part is the youngest age group here, 16 to 24 year olds. Uh, and the younger we get on this graph, the more we see social networks are actually the places people go to search up a brand. And this group is the one that does it over a search engine. And I'm not 16 
to 24. However, I can confirm that actually I have started using social media. Like I will type it in, in like Instagram or something when I want to find out more about any kind of product, because honestly, it's just easier for me that way. Um, and this isn't to say SEO or anything isn't important. It's just that as you know, uh, we kind of build a culturally relevant brand, it means we need to engage with culturally relevant platforms. And things are always changing. I understand it's really stressful. We, there was a MySpace. Now there is no MySpace. Facebook, I don't even know what Facebook is doing. Um, and now we have TikTok and we have so many other things and there's probably more and more things coming. And it can be really stressful. I understand, uh, but there are reasons to which, uh, you know, we want to engage with these platforms as studios, as games, as people, whatever. And again, this is what works for Among Us. And this is, you know, how we got all this data with like, you know, experimentation, a little bit of flexibility, agility. All of these are super important for a constantly morphing platform like TikTok, where the trends are driven by users and internet memes. Um, and working with data alongside cultural interest in the space is key to making a successful brand in a space like this. Engage with your community, not just, remember, it's not just about numbers going up, but having like a healthy and thriving long-term player base. And then, you know, as to the bigger the player base goes, maybe you can depend a little less on social media platforms if that's not your thing, if that's not what you like. Um, and as I said, you really want to engage with the platforms to be a culturally relevant continuing brand, but also be a brand that engages and is conscious of the world that it's a part of. Um, hopefully you want to make a good mark wherever you are too. And every brand success measures by far are very different, but merging quantitative and qualitative data will take you very far. Thank you for listening to me uh, babble on for quite a while. Uh, I guess we can start doing questions. Um, I know there is a lot in chat, but for people who are attending in the audience, I don't know if, maybe I'll answer a question in chat while the audience can uh, think about it. Okay, <laughs> questions, let's see. Um, how does marketing on TikTok differ from other social media systems? Is there anything you found that's significantly easier or harder on different platforms? That's a very big question. Um, I think a lot of social media platforms, if you're talking about marketing, if you're talking about like paid marketing or something, that could be very different. Uh, as with anything, I think with TikTok, the thing that a lot of people struggle with is just how organic TikTok needs to feel sometimes. Um, and especially when you're, if you're making like a sponsored or an ad on TikTok, a lot of the time, like you will automatically scroll through it if you can see that it's a clear brand. But if it's like uh, someone who's like a little more, I've seen people like use like influencers on TikTok, like just like kind of talk about a product more organically, um, but still have the ad thing. Uh, that's something I think is one of the things that people are struggling with. I hope that was your question. Um, do we have questions from the audience in Hello. person? Hello. Oh, yes. yes. Hello. Hi. Hello. <laughs> Hello. I'm a huge fan. And uh, yes, mm -hmm. so this is kind of a two-part question. We were actually both uh, finalists last year in the game hers for Best Community Manager Indie, so I would love to be your friend oh. if possible. <laughs> um, and also, what do you do if something is failing and the studio is freaking out uh how do you pivot or react to that is there kind of a a panic plan or do you have any tips or advice for something like that when something is failing like let's say in... on social you kind of have a not the reaction you were hoping for maybe you've done kind of a troll post or a meme post and it's kind of getting maybe canceled or something like that kind of the worst possible and you're getting a lot of really negative negative response do you have any tips for that on TikTok or really any socials yeah, so I hesitate to kind of give super blanket response answers to this because I'm like, what are you, what did you post? <laughs> right, so it's, it's, right, so it's one of those things where it's like, well, I mean, there's only so much firefighting you can do depending on how severe the community thinks it is. Like if you made like um, a joke and they're like a silence brand because I don't know, it was a really old meme and whatever, then it's one of those things where you can just move on from it. People, like again, uh, people's uh, attention spans and remembering th of things super fast. I would just keep posting. Um, maybe, I don't know what it is. Feel free to DM, uh, DM me on Twitter. I don't know what's happening. Uh, <laughs> but I would say when it comes to, yeah, it's just, 
being honest with whatever your your studio and understanding that sometimes things don't take up well with the community or at least like responding to the comments in there and being like you know what you're right that wasn't the greatest joke we could have made gonna fix it or do, i don't know again i don't know what happened um but i would say like really taking note of what the community is saying and making an effort to like respond engage with it like i took like almost like a day just going through comment dead game comments and responding to it um so hopefully that helps <laughs> it does thank you so much and thank you for okay. being here yeah no thank you um okay i will switch to a chat question um is there an ideal video length that you found drove the most engagement yes under 15 seconds always uh well okay most engagement mm, no because as the graph kind of showed it honestly was pretty consistent it's if you want the views though then under 15 seconds all right in person question hey victoria it's jared Ooh, it's hello loud. Oh, hey. Um, yeah, thanks for always being willing to share everything that you've learned from like all of these games that you've worked on. Um, I was wondering for discoverability of a game that let's say is relatively unknown, like you did with Boyfriend Dungeon or Unpacking, what would be like one big point that you'd give advice for discoverability of a relatively unknown game on TikTok? Yeah, so, okay, oh God, one. Um, <laughs> It's, it's okay. So it's a mixture of things. The, the biggest thing is always just like the hook of your TikTok content. So the, the first video that ever blew up on Kit Fox games when I was working on it, that like got like the first, like the first video I had like, over, like maybe like over a hundred thousand views, views in, um, or maybe over 10,000 views. And it's been a long time. Sorry. I'm stalling, uh, is one where I was like, I was basically talking about like dating your weapons or something. It was just like one of like something that was kind of, if you heard it for the first time, you were like, wait, what? <laughs> so having people like really uh, have like a wait, what moment is usually quite helpful when it comes to like discoverability. Um, like the weird, like so if you go on TikTok, there's like a weirdness to it. There's like a little bit of a chaos to it. And that really uh, is something that hooks on quite a bit. And when it comes to unpacking, oh, I, I also, sorry, I also meant to say having like three to five hashtags, usually pretty good. Um, please make it relevant. But some people like, just look at the hashtags other game studios are using and kind of learn from that. Uh, and for unpacking, the first one that kind of went viral was honestly just talking about the joy of, I think, talking about organization because so many people love organizing things um, on like TikTok has like organization TikTok, there's book talk, there is game talk, there there are so many like sub TikTok uh, genres is that really honing in onto one genre that you like you really want people to discover uh, is usually the way to get more discoverability. Ooh, okay, um, we're over time, but Oh no, okay, I was gonna say, but they didn't tell me to wrap up yet, but they totally did. Uh, <laughs> I just ignored it, sorry. Uh, thank you for being here. Uh, if you have any more questions, and I know there are a lot of questions in chat and I'm sure in person, um, please feel free to message me on Twitter. It might take me a little bit to get to it, but I will try to get to it or just tweet at me um, so other people can see the question too. Yeah, thank you so much for being here. I hope it was helpful uh, and have a good GDC, stay safe if you're out there. Okay. Bye.